Hello and welcome to our third edition of the eSport Lunch Lectures Germany. Um, today we have a very exciting topic, even though it's data protection. We will talk a bit about player data under the GDPR. Not I will talk about it, but Corbinia. And um, as this is a bit of a complex a topic, we will jump right in it to save some time. Corbinia, the stage is yours. Thank you. And thank you all for attending. We want to start right now. I will start with a short introduction into the topic and some terms of data protection. And then we will have a look at the different processings of uh, esports and their legal basis. And after that into some other issues, structural, stru structural issues we have to face in esport data protection. Sorry. Um, I want to start with the Red Card project, um, a project where um, over 800 football players and managers, so we're in tra traditional sports, are involved and fighting for their compensation of uh, data usage of um, analyzation and betting companies. Um, their allegation is um, that they process um, personal data without a legal basis. They're at the moment uh, in negotiations, but if these negotiations fail, a lawsuit, lawsuit may be filed. And um, this has already been a far-reaching signal for data protection in sport. But what about esports? In esports, there's um, da data is as much, if not even more important as um, whole esports itself, the game. Uh, consists out of data and therefore data is even easier to obtain and of course easier to process and data in general will become even more important um, when the value increase and the way of processing uh, data and uh, working with it will improve and we um, in the uh, esport industry as a very young industry should um, use the possibi possibilities now to steer the processing in an orderly manner to be always compliant with GDPR. I want to give a short explanation of the most important uh, data protection terms uh, of the GDPR for example, uh, Article 4, number 1, personal data means any information relating to an identified or identifiable natural person, the so-called data subject. So this is basically any information in a game which can be related to a player, for example, via his name or more usual via his uh, game t gamer tag is personal data and therefore uh, subject uh, to the GDPR. So any action taken by the player and regi registered by the game is already personal data in the game and can be processed. One single game of uh, League of Legends or anything else uh, is, is therefore loaded with personal data. And two very important terms about um, data protection responsibilities. Um, the controller means any natural or legal person which alone or jointly with others determines the purposes and means of the processing of personal data. The controller is the one who is responsible for law lawful data processing and therefore has to be found immediately. And then we have the processor, which means a natural or legal person which processes the data on behalf of the controller. He's mo mostly um, just doing technical work and uh, does not de determine any purpose or means. As we just heard, um, there's a lot of data in esports and we have to think about what can even be used as pro, uh, what can even um, be processed usefully, and there we we found like three main topics. There's what, the first is the analy analysis of the player performance, and we have uh, fan engagement or marketing with uh, the uh, player's uh, gameplay, and uh, the third point is statistics and other processings for the expanded ecosystem and therefore especially betting, as we heard in the last lunch lecture. Um, 
to the topic of analysis. We have two very big uh, stakeholders here. Um, even though the data originates in the game itself and therefore is usually at the publisher, the esport organizations, especially the clubs and the players himself and their agents need uh, to analyze um, the data um, for the esport organizations, the performance um, of their players um, for improvement is of course very important and uh, the da data and statistics as a measurement of the value of the player is uh, another um, big point as this might be um, very important for, for the uh, investment value of, of an organization and therefore for their financial statement. And of course the, uh, the player himself and his agent, they have to analyze their market value to negotiate about salary and other uh, bonuses and also the, the aim of almost every uh, esport athlete is to is the personal improvement all the time and therefore um, they process uh, the data of games and trainings to analyze the performance the communication between the, the team and uh, and uh, other teams and to analyze the progress uh, over a season or even a longer period. Just as an example, the performance in data means uh, typical data like uh, actions per minute, uh, headshot rate or kill death assist in shooters, damage dealt or, dealt or taken, goal scored and even more. Every measurable action in a game to win can be um, processed for um, performance analysis. The fan engagement concerns also uh, the esports organizations, of course, they, they do streaming and VOD social media to interact with their uh, fan base. And same applies for the publishers. They stream as well. They do um, social media, um, where they process, for example, statistics, highlights, or um, find uh, they tr try to find new possibilities for microtransactions where the fans can engage or do raffles to improve uh, the fan engagement. And the third point, the expanded ecosystem, the stakeholders here are especially the betting companies. They need the data for um, setting off the betting odds by, proce by processing the player data and general game data to um, have uh, serious odds to provide their business. Now I want to go into the legal basis and therefore uh, the issues. I'm starting with the legitimate interest uh, of, as it is um, described in Article 6 uh, um, GDPR. Um, the legitimate interest is an under, indefinite uh, legal concept and um, the balancing of these interests is always a matter of, an, of the individual case. Um, you can compare um, the interests of the data subject and the interests of the controller, but in the end it's, it differs from case to case. I want to give just some examples. For example, as an interest of the data subject, the esport athlete, um, there is uh, definitely the data value. Um, esport is, uh, for at least for professional players, uh, is his livelihood, and especially health-related uh, data is uh, very dangerous. Therefore, for him, if it becomes uh, public, or um, any other sensitive data, he has an interest to, be, uh, to stay secret. And of course, for not that professional uh, players, the, the right of privacy is also a very strong object. And this is basically, basically the core of data protection to um, have your own privacy. And on the other side, you have to compare it to the interests of uh, data controllers, um, especially eSport uh, e clubs have an interest in uh, investment preservation and um, the eco uh, and other economic interests. And also you have to take in into consideration that a lot of data is already public uh, accessible as the 
today's um, esport environment relies on public streams which are free of charge um this balance must be found um, between those two interests um, to, pres uh, to preserve both interests as much as possible and uh, on every individu individual case. I want to give uh, two examples here. For example, if you have uh, these public accessible non-sensitive data, they can, they can be processed way easier for economic interests like setting of uh, betting odds or but um for example the processing of sensitive data uh, like health data um they cannot be processed for the interest of economic uh, for, for economic interest as a second legal basis we have the performance of a contract um which has two major issues of course the performance of a contract can just happen between contracting parties and um, the, the, the limit of this processing is uh, the data which is necessary for the performance of, of this contract so this is usually very uh, contract key data and not um, the very um, valuable data and as a third we have the consent is this the solution there's uh, it's so i would say uh, there are um, arguments for consents but uh, the arguments against it are overwhelming consent works for all, almost all processing and it needs to be informed which gives, in my point of view, some kind of security as everybody knows what he's consenting to. And for some special uh, sensitive data, you even need a consent. You cannot um, uh, process it with an, another legal basis. But the cons are very strong because um, the uh, consent, as it needs to be inform informed, um, this transparency means effort. The, the consent needs to be voluntary, so you cannot couple it with uh, claims and you cannot put any pressure on the, the, consent, the consent subject. And the biggest con is, of course, it's freely revocable at any time. You cannot plan with it, and especially um, for mass business, it's quite impractical. So if we compare these um, legal bases, um, the state of the art at the moment, the go-to uh, legal basis is a legitimate interest as it's indefinite and the balance of interest can be argumented uh, in your own way. It's very easy to go to, but um, it's not without risk. As we saw in the Red Cut project, um, there, there will be um, lawsuits, there will be negotiations, um, which interests overwhelms and uh, is there enough compensation? S secondly, the performance of a contract for um, yeah the, the very contractual key data, but it's not uh, it's not the basis for the really valuable valuable uh, data, and the consent at last, which has some um, perks, but in general it's just not a reliable. Um, legal basis as it's freely in, uh, uh, revocable. Um, on the next slide, I want to um, address another structural issue, the data flow. Um, the data flow in esports um, can have various use cases, so we cannot really simplify uh, the flows. Um, I tried to paint you something, but uh, I, I hope you, you, you will understand. Uh, in, in general, we can say that the publisher or the tournament organizer who are in, in charge of, uh, of the single games or tournaments, um, they control the data, but they're sometimes, but not always, uh, their controller. You're in the, when you look at uh, data flows, you always have to ask, who is, in, who is the controller, who determines um, the purposes and means of the processing and therefore um, has to take into consider the consideration if a processing is lawful. 
as we have um, all the data, we need uh, most of the time service providers to make use of, of these the data. These are the blue arrows in almost every um, relation you need them, but they are mostly technical service providers and therefore only processors. Um, I want to give two examples uh, um, concerning the publisher. For example, um, as he is, a, or the publisher or the tournament organizer, as he um, creates the game and uh, hosts the game, he's in control of the data. And if he uses this data for his own pur uh, for its own purposes and means, he is also the controller. But at the moment, he gives it to an esport club or sells it to him, and the esport club has its own purpose and means. Here, uh, the esport club will become a controller too, and therefore we have a controller-controller situation where both are responsible for the lawfulness of the processing. And on the other hand, there might be a situation where um, a publisher or tournament organizer gets assigned by a club to collect data for the club, um, but the publisher or tournament organizer itself cannot utilize this data. So the eSport club at this moment uh, determines the purposes and means of the processing and therefore is the controller while the publisher is just a pro um, processor and therefore not responsible. I hope I got this somehow right uh, and you understood what I mean. The data flows in eSport environment are uh, complex and differentiate uh, at many times. And for handling these situations, um, the roles and uh, processings must be settled from the beginning. Which leads me to the next slide, how to deal with eSport data protection. If you want to deal with these uh, situations uh, properly, and you should because um, data protection is way too big to leave it up to follow up ne negotiations or just ignore it. We have to take uh, structural decisions uh, as who is the controller and who is the processor and um, settle the corresponding duties like information duties to the data subject or information duties to the authorities in case of data breaches or anything else from the very beginning on. We have to always keep an overview where is the data flowing and who is the controller who is responsible. As a conclusion, um, lessons learned, um, data protection under the GDPR regime is too big to postpone or to ignore in business affairs, um, especially as the data value increases steady and therefore uh, it's worth to be settled clearly in my opinion. The legal basis as the current go-to legal, ba legal ba uh, the legitimate interest as the current go-to legal basis is on the trial bench, uh, as we see in Red Card Project. And maybe a rethink will happen soon, and uh, we will find other legal bases. And at last, the financial risk of uh, non-compliance with uh, data protection can be massive, as it's re regulated in Articles th uh, 82 and 83 GDPR with high fines and compensation claims. Thank you all.